everyone and welcome to Wellness Wednesday. So today we're going to talk about the brain-gut connection. And we'll do it a little differently, but first of all, uh, let's have a look at this. Uh, the reason we talk about brain-gut connection is, is that the bacteria you have in your intestines, uh, the microbiome, actually contributes to digesting your food. As a matter of fact, you couldn't get the nutrients out of your food that you do without that gut bacteria in there. Now, they also have an effect on producing a certain hormones. As a matter of fact, most people understand in neuroscience that, that are up on this, not everybody, but they're, that are up on this, that uh, the amount of hormones, neurohormones produced in your gut are greater than the ones produced in your brain. But we know that there is a connection between what they call the uh, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. So that means that in your brain, you have this uh, organ called the hypothalamus that picks up when uh, certain chemicals are low or certain chemicals are high in your body. And then it relays a message to the pituitary gland and the pituitary gland then takes that information and sends a signaling um, chemical that signals different hormones uh, or different glands to produce certain hormones. And the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal glass uh, axis is this kind of fight or flight thing that if you get into uh, difficulty, it will send uh, some information to the pituitary gland through the hypothalamus then it will uh, send in some um, adrenal stimulating hormone, which then gets you ready for fight or flight or that kind of thing. So we know that there's a, a direct connection between that either way. Either it uh, damps it down or it increases it. Now, uh, we know that the vagus nerve, now I know a lot about the vagus nerve because obviously being a chiropractor, we studied this very, very deeply and still look at the new information on it that it actually, it's a major nerve that comes from the top part of your neck. Uh, it's a cr it's called a cranial nerve. It actually comes from your brain, it goes down to your body and connects to all of the organs of your body. And uh, it's called a parasympathetic nerve. So it stimulates regeneration and rebuilding of your body and excretion and all of those things that your, your um, different organs do in order to promote your body and how it works. So then it has a connection with what we call inflammatory disorders. Like when you're stressed, uh, you release adrenal uh, hormones, which uh, actually increases your blood sugar level, which actually causes um, increased inflammatory responses. In other words, if you're frightened then and you're trying to get away from something, then your body wants to protect you. So if you're gonna get wounded or that kind of thing, it wants to produce the hormones uh, that respond with inflammation to heal up that wound as quickly as possible to keep you alive. So that's that whole thing of that, how that's connected together. And, and that's why I wanted to follow into this. Like we can talk about the microbiome in another video, but, but the biggest thing is, here's what happens. You can be eating the best foods and doing the best things, but if you're, um, if you're just frightened for an instant, what happens is it changes your whole body chemistry instantly. So I wanted to go down that path. So let's go down that path. So when you get stressed, what happens is the body goes into that fight or flight mode and then you get more adrenaline produced, which increases your blood sugar level, which causes your inflammatory response to go up. And um, what it does is it actually moves the blood from your internal organs that are doing all the work of digesting your food, producing the right hormones, regenerating your body. So, you, so then it shifts it and pushes it out to the uh, limbs so you can get out of there and get away. Um, the big problem with this is that your brain learns a habit pattern. So what will happen is, is that over time, if you keep getting stressed, and you can go to all the gurus like Joe Dispenza and uh, Bruce Lipton and, you know, Molecules of Emotion, Joe Dispenza and his books, and, um, You Are the Placebo and all the other ones uh, for more in depth on that. But when you are in the stress mode, it shuts down the regenerative habits of, of your body. And so then if it becomes chronic over time, then anything that you run into that's a difficult situation will cause uh, this stress reaction. And you can be in constant stress reaction all the time. 
So what does it do to your body? Well, it has a lot of effects. It has a big effect on your gut. Obviously, your digestion isn't going to work right. If your digestion isn't working right, like your immune system is connected to the nervous system in depth, psychoneuroimmunology, if you want to go in depth to that one, I should do a little video on that one. Yeah, the nervous system actually controls the immune system. In 1988, there was an article on uh, how the two systems are actually one system that work together and respond immediately together. So uh, psychoneuroimmunology means that uh, when you're stressed, your nervous system reacts to get you out of there. It depresses your immune system, so then you're more likely to get colds and sicknesses if you're under chronic stress and chronic tension, like a lot of people are right now. So then that causes this, um, what we call acidic reaction, like your, your body becomes uh, acidic. So you're using a lot of chemicals in your muscles and produces a lot of lactic acid that your mitochondria can't burn off enough. And that produces a lot, again, more inflammation and pain and all of the stiffness in your muscles. That's why when you're stressed, your shoulders go up and you get the pain in your shoulder blades and the pain in the back of your neck and all of that stuff. And then your brain can't work right. When you're in stress mode, your brain can't work right. You can't think properly. And so I could go on and on for a half an hour on this, probably a whole day lecture on it, but I won't do that. So you get the idea that stress will shut down uh, your whole digestive system right away. And what does that mean? So um, here's, the, here's the point here. You can't be in two different modes at once. Like you can't be stressed and you can't be happy at the same time. The good news is, is that if you can move yourself from that stress mode into a happy mode, then what happens is, is that it calms your body down. So then it reverses everything. It allows your brain to work better. It allows your adrenal system to come back down again. It allows the blood to come from your uh, from your limbs and then back into your organ system. It allows your organ system to get working right. It allows you to regenerate and rebuild. It allows your immune system to work normally again and to fight for you and, and that kind of thing. So what we want to do is remove, move into the relax mode. So how would you do that? Well, there's a lot of things you can do, a lot of ways. And again, I could do a week's lesson on this it, over and over and over again. Even just singing a happy song or a song that makes you happy. Um, get up and dance a bit. Put some music on that really, it, it's, again, Anthony Robbins did that a lot in, in NLP. They, they talk about changing your state. In other words, going from a state of, oh my God, what am I going to do? How am I going to get this done? To, hey, it's a great day. Let me dance around and have fun. As soon as you do that, you switch into the positive mode and the stress uh, moves away or is relieved and your body gets back to regenerative mode. You can do meditation. Uh, I, I did a little video on um, micro movement meditation is a different form of, of meditation. And if you just do micro movements, tiny little movements that, that you can just move your head lightly forward, gently back and just pay attention to the movements, do circles, that kind of thing. Anyways, all of those things, uh, I have a little video on that that I will put up later. Uh, that takes your brain's attention to being relaxed and slows your brain down and puts it into that alpha relaxed state and gets it out of the beta state of hyper excitement and then allows your body again to get into that relaxed state and to get into the regenerative state and you know if you do a little exercise that's that's great too or yeah again you know get into the mindfulness state you know the Eckhart Tolle thing where you um just sit and think of how great things are like every time every morning i get up i walk down to the office i look around and think of all these trees around me how this wonderful atmosphere i live in this wonderful place and i have all of these wonderful friends that i work with and all these community groups i can work with and it, that just puts me in the right mood for the day it's, it's really amazing what you can do and you can switch very very quickly and uh, one of the other videos where I talked about stacking anchors where you can just hug yourself and go, I'm so lucky to be where I am right now. And considering what's going on and where we live out here on Vancouver Island, whoa, yes, we are extremely lucky to be here. Uh, as the politicians are going wild and doing crazy things that don't make sense to anybody in any scientific way. Uh, we're here all by ourselves. We can hang out with friends we're doing well look at us we don't get sick because we're happy and maybe that's because
being happy keeps your immune system up, psychoneuroimmunology, and by keeping your immune system up, fights away any of those things that might affect you. And it's not so much the virus that gives you the problem, it's how your immune system is. Unfortunately, the more stressed you are, the more it attacks your immune system, the more it lowers your immunity, and the more likely you are to catch a virus that's around, and then it can take over for you with viral load and all those things. But I don't want to go too far down that pathway. But anyways, so switch your mood, change your state, sing, do some mindfulness things, look around, look at how beautiful the day, day is, have a look at the ocean, have a look at the mountains, think of how wonderful it is where we live, sit and just do a little bit of meditation, hum a bit, slow yourself down, do some deep breathing. Yeah, you can, uh, that Wim Hof thing, just take in a nice deep breath. Hold it and just let it out slowly. And then again, hold it, let it out slowly. Slows you right down. So those are some of the things you can do. And um, you know, the, the, the alternative health approach is like, alternative health is kind of given a bad rap because everybody th thinks that it's there to treat specific diseases. Well, not really. Uh, the alternative health approach is about promoting your health. In alternative health approaches, we know that your body does the healing. So what we do is we allow your body to reduce the stress, like a chiropractic, acupuncture, massage, reflexology, all those other things help to reduce the muscle tension that's built up. When you can reduce that tension, it doesn't send the tense signals back to your brain that keeps you in that stressed mode. And so by doing that, it relaxes you. So you can then get into that more relaxed state. It can help release the tension in your thoracic cage and that builds up in your abdomen and your diaphragm that uh, causes that shallow breathing. And then you're, allowed, then you're able to get in deeper breaths. Uh, and as you get in deeper breaths, you're taking more oxygen in. As you get more oxygenated, it reduces um, your body's stress level and it alkalizes your blood and, and makes your blood even, even better. Uh, and, it, and goes through that whole inflammatory thing and reverses the inflammatory thing, which allows your body to work better and on and on and on and on. And on. Uh, a good friend of mine, um, uh, James Chestnut, a, a chiropractor that teaches the, the wellness practice all over the world, he always talks about allostatic load. That means all of the stress, your mental stress, your physical stress, all of those uh, things that are going on all add up to uh, in affecting you and reducing your body's ability to help and regenerate itself. So anything you can do, uh, homeopathy, great remedies there for helping you uh, with those anxiety states and helping you bring back to a more relaxed state. Uh, you know, botanical medicines, all of those great things that we have uh, around us for alternative medicine. And again, it's not partic particularly for the treatment of disease. Like it doesn't treat coronavirus. It doesn't treat those things. It just helps your body relax and get into that state where the immune system is working better. And as the immune system works better, then it can help to fight off those things that, that might be attacking you. Anyways, so um, what about some foods? Well, again, here's the point. Again, you can eat all of these wonderful foods, which is a great idea. And fruits are really cleansing. Uh, you know, nuts are really good. They, uh, if you look at a walnut, it looks a lot like a brain. And, it, and it's funny, but it has a lot of chemistry in it that helps your brain rebuild itself. And, you know, omega-3s from uh, fish. And your brain is mostly fat, so it helps to rebuild uh, the fat. Uh, you've got, uh, again, the fruits are, help, uh, are cleansing. Nice different teas, chamomile tea, even green tea. Green tea is a, a great tea for stimulating your brain action and getting your brain to work well. There's even some research that shows that coffee helps that too. Uh, dark chocolate. I like the raw chocolate I get uh, from the market, from our Qualcomm Beach market. Uh, it is so delicious. You just have to have one or two little cubes of that chocolate and boy, it satisfies you so much. And the antioxidant availability of that stuff is just off the charts. It's, it's one of those wonder foods. Um, but the point I wanted to make is 
get together with family and friends and get around and have a nice meal. That relaxing state with your friends having a good time will help your digestion even more than just eating the foods themselves. A very important thing to do in this time of hyper stress. So yeah, get together with your friends, have a great meal, uh, helps to build your microbiome, helps to relieve your brain stress, helps your body stress, helps your immune system. So enjoy trying all of these simple methods out. And again, thanks for uh, tuning in and, and watching and uh, look for next Wednesday's Wellness Wednesday.